Welcome back, friends, to my flood mini-series. This is part three. Um, we'll be traveling around the world looking for different evidences that support the Bible record. And uh, let's get into it. So, having a look at the Bible, as far as the timeline goes, each and every one of those blocks at the bottom, the blue and the whites, will be a thousand years. So, Adam lived some 900 odd years. Methuselah 969 and Noah lived about 953 I believe. Then after 1656 years we have the global flood. Um, if you don't know how we get to 1656 you can watch that first video there in the series. So after the flood there was the Tower of Babel and then shortly after that God called Abraham and he had Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel. Then they went into Egypt and they were called out of Egypt at the Exodus. All right. And so that was the time of Israel for those 1400 years. Jesus came and they rejected Jesus. And then we have the period of the church with the Dark Ages. So we, according to the Bible, we're about 6,000 years from creation. And the reason why we're doing this, remember, is because Satan's modus operandi has never changed it works his main thing is to cast doubt on the word of God you shall surely die God said when you eat of that fruit and Satan said you shall not surely die and sowed the seed of doubt over God's word over the trustworthiness of God's word he's constantly casting doubt over the word of God and this is what drives me. This is why I do this channel. And this is why we're doing this lecture. And so <clears throat> we have, according to the Bible, this 4,367, let's just call it 4,500 years from today going backwards to the flood. So this is what the Bible says. So nothing should have survived this flood. If this flood was as the Bible says it was, if there was waters that covered the entire planet and no living thing survived that was air breathing, uh, it must have been quite a tumultuous affair. Noah was on the flood as we uh, was on the ark for uh, over a year, we remember. It was a major, major event. And being such a major event, we now want to look at what evidences we can find as we travel around the world and we can see Going back four and a half thousand years from today, 2023, 2022, what can we find that will support this? And is there anything that contradicts this information? So we go across, for example, trees. Trees should not have survived the flood. All right. Um, no, no ways. Because the, 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 the plates... And the continents moved so much, there was a swishing forward and a swishing back. And this is why we get these sedimentary layers around the whole world, across the whole world. And there was no way that trees would have survived. So um, in Africa, we see the majestic baobab trees. Uh, they are a weird tree. They look like they've been shoved in the ground upside down. Okay, I just love them. So in search of South Africa's oldest baobab tree... And what do we look here? They say that this tree is um, about 1844. All right, well, that's interesting. That doesn't challenge the flood record, according to the Bible. What about uh, we go to National Park Service online there, .gov, and we see what they have to say. They say the Baobab of Africa has been estimated to reach an age of perhaps 4,000 years, but to date no authentic ring count has been presented. Okay, so we've looked at the one, I think that was carbon dated to 1844. The Banyan of, of India has an estimated age of 3,000 years, which is fairly well authenticated by historical data. The Tool Express, uh, Cypress of Mexico has been uh, variously estimated between two and 5,000 years, ex but the 3,000-year estimate of the most expert investigator. So, no, not 5,000, 3,000 is the, the oldest that the experts have come up with in Mexico. Claims of age of living trees up to 12,000 years have been made for several species, including 
uh, the one of Australia, which is a cycad, but it doesn't produce annual rings, so we can just forget about that one. At the bottom, it's very interesting, it says, it is significant to note that in practically every case where careful study and comparisons of very large trees has been made by scientists, age estimates have been materially reduced from the claims made by enthusiastic boosters, in some cases to less than 1,000 years. So, the giant sequoia, according to Britannica, they're saying here that the largest stumps were examined in tree ring studies and were found to be less than 4,000 years old. All right, again, according to Britannica, the oldest living organism is found in California and it is the Great Basin Bristlecone Pine. What a mouthful. Okay, just call it the Bristlecone Pine as far as I'm concerned. And they say it is about... 4,800 years of age. All right, what about other places in the world? We've got Australia. The oldest tree there is to be about, it's believed to be about 2,000 years old. What about Europe? According to National Geographic, the oldest European tree found and having its growth sport at the moment, and they're saying it is 1,230 years old. What about China? The oldest trees in China and where to find them. Okay, so we go to this uh, JSTOR website here. Um, and they've got a little map of China. And right up in the highest areas, up on the mountains, between three and 5,000 uh, 5, 8, meters, apparently, uh, are some of these old trees. But <clears throat> as you can see, they are registered there. There's a registry of where they are in each province, the oldest tree in each province of China. And the oldest ones they have in record there are 2,230 years, according to that map. This is something interesting. What about the Sahara? The Sahara Desert, North Africa, was born 4,000 years ago. That's interesting. German scientists say that the Sahara underwent a brutal climate change about 4,000 years ago. What about the, the world's most famous and uh, greatest coral reef? Now, I, I love to dive, so this is of interest to me. Um, they say here, if today's coral reefs grew on the present land surface only after Noah's flood, they would surely have to be less than 4,400 years old. That's exactly what I've been saying, right? Recent research studies, uh, research indicates this is not just wishful creationist thinking, but it is highly probable. And I encourage you to go and have a look at that um, page in creation.com. <clears throat> they explain how they um, started measuring the, the growth of the, of the reef with um, boring because there was, a, uh, there was some construction going on in that area and they, they took the samples of the boring or something. Anyway, they figured it out that the, the, the growth was between 15 and 25 moles per year. And they say here, this means that the reefs are about 180 feet or 55 meters thick, a staggering amount of coral. And I remember there was just like a coral graveyard, some of the places. But on a basis of 15 moles growth per year, these reefs may be less than 3,700 years old. These are the thickest reefs in the Great Barrier Reef chain of reefs, and they would have therefore also appear to be the oldest. And there we have that figure, 3,700 years old. I actually did my, hey, shout out to all you Aussies down there. I did my my paddy certification at the Great Barrier Reef in '99, and uh, that's the class that graduated with me. That is a giant clam. Look at that! It's my arm holding the side of it. Normally they're open, and as you touch them on the inside, they close slowly. And it's amazing how they filter feed. They have like a a very powerful water pump sucking in the one side and blowing out the other side. It's very visible. It's an amazing thing. Anyway, back to the story. So we are looking at this paradigm here, according to the Bible, that the flood took place about 4,400 years ago. What does the evidence tell us? The baobab tree, 
that's not a challenge to the flood record. Giant sequoias, 3,000 years old. That's not a problem. The world's largest coral reef, 3,700. That's not a problem. Sahara Desert was born about 4,000 years ago. That's in line with the Bible record. What about Mexico? That's not a problem. The oldest tree in Australia? That's not a problem. Europe's oldest tree? That's not a problem. China's oldest tree? The 2,230 or so was on that map, but I did read in a text that some were purported to be 3,500, but it wasn't um, verified. But I'll just put it there because I, neither of those dates is a problem for the Bible record. And the oldest is not a problem. The bristlecone pine is about 4,500 years old. Isn't that interesting? So, as far as I'm concerned, the Bible is vindicated with that story. Now, after the flood, we had the Tower of Babel. And God scattered them abroad from the face of the earth. And they left off to build the city. In other words, they stopped building the city because they were given a language barrier. And so people went from Babel because the flood <clears throat> took the ark to Mount Ararat in Turkey. And then most people went down from Turkey. They went down the Fertile Crescent down to Shinar or into Iraq, Babylon, which um, there was no Babylon at that point, but um, that's where they established Babel, which later became Babylon. And God changed their languages and the people went and dispersed across the entire planet, taking with them the very fresh in their mind story of the flood. Now, did you know about 70 stories from around the world of a catastrophic flood, according to this book by Ugert and Sykes? Um, there's another book here, but this book, I actually looked it up, it's about two hundred and fifty dollars at least if you can find one and he estimates that altogether there are over 500 flood legends in his book moons myths and men uh, what about epic of gilgamesh you must have heard of this uh, by lambert and millard now this is interesting in 1872, George Smith was busy in the British Museum examining fragments of clay tablets dug up on the ruins of Nineveh in the 1850s. So here is this, this um, for 25 years or so, this um, tablet has been lying there and he starts to um, decipher it and read it and suddenly he realized that he was reading the story of a flood which had striking resemblances to the biblical account. And there you have it there. You can pause the DVD just for the sake of time. I'm not going to go through everything, but it's it's pretty detailed. You know, everything must come on the ship, uh, uh, board the ship and close the door. We know that the Lord shut him in and closed the door. He sent out a dove. Uh, we know Noah sent out a dove. Then um, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, he says they are sent out a raven. We know that Noah sent out a raven. And then at the end of it all, I made a libation on the mountain, which is an offering. And then we also know that Noah made an altar to the Lord <coughs> and offered a burnt offering when he came out of the ark. Fascinating. Now, <coughs> my German is a terrible. Die Flutensagen ethnologisch or gisch. <laughs> Ich nicht ein bisschen Deutsch. Okay, I've slaughtered that, right? So this book, uh, this German scholar in his book has collected 88 different flood traditions. 20 of these have an Asiatic origin. Five come from Europe. Seven were found in Africa. Ten in Australia and the South Sea Islands. And 46 were found among the Aborigines of the Americas. Isn't that interesting again as far as i'm concerned the bible is vindicated so in summary friends there are substantial reasons to doubt the popular narrative about the age of the earth substantial reasons to believe the biblical accounts of both creation and the flood on this channel <clears throat> we're going to be doing lectures or presentations on the his historical records and how we can trust the bible just from a historicity point of view archaeology and um, how that can verify and vindicate the Bible. We've got 
On top of that, we've got prophecy coming. So there's still a lot of reasons. But friends, number one reason as well is that we serve a living God. The God of the Bible is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And when you have a relationship with him, you don't need this kind of evidence. But this kind of evidence is important, especially if you're searching. And so I encourage you to to watch the next video. This is going to be quite exciting. We're looking at how the Chinese uh, can give credit to the flood. That's going to blow you away if you haven't seen it already. And now, friend, if you haven't already given your life to the Lord, if you're a seeker and that's what you stumbled on this video here today, I encourage you to, to continue seeking, to continue looking at the evidences and give God a chance. Have a look at what there is out there. And I encourage you, this channel is, is designed and is intended for people that are seeking, people that don't know a lot about the Bible, so that they have a, a beginning place to start and they can build up understanding of the Bible and also build up faith and that we can actually trust the Bible. So I encourage you to subscribe, share this video with your friends. But ask God into your life and uh, and he will definitely reveal himself to you. You know, if you have a look at the suicide mortality in the United States, how it's been increasing over the last two two decades, okay? And even more now. This is this is this is less than a year old, okay? Suicide rates highest among teens and young adults. Wow. When your whole life is in front of you, this is where the highest Suiciders, they're saying that nearly 20% of high school students report serious thoughts of suicide and 9% have made attempts to their lives. Wow, so in every classroom there's like two or three people who've tried to take their lives. Check this out. A person like me, who supposedly has the entire world in front of him, can be fully prepared to give up the world entirely, Miller wrote. What? This is so sad. For some of those folks, relying on other people and reaching out for help has been so difficult or shameful. Reaching out to others is is difficult. This is so terrible. People are just so hard. There's no one to turn to. Not all suicides are attributable to depression either. While depression is a risk factor for suicide, Dr. Fleischer says that only half of the people who take their lives had depression. Well, if only half take who take their lives or attempt to take their lives had depression, then what is the motivation for the other half? This is my question. People who have vulnerable self-esteem, self-feelings that require ongoing protection promotion. What is the cause of all of these things? What is the cause? Why all of a sudden is it getting so bad? Okay, I, I really believe... This is what they're teaching at schools. The universe came from nothing, for nothing, and by nothing. There was this big explosion. Nothing exploded into everything. (laughs) This is what they're teaching, right? Life came from nothing. No, friends. Life comes from life. A living God made life. All these clever people, they still can't make anything. Anything. They can't make a living cell. They can't make anything that is living. They have to take something living to to continue making something living. But nothing has been made that's living from non-living except the Creator God. Okay, And, And this implies that your life has no meaning. This is what the school systems are designed to do now. The school and the universities. People are losing their religion in the universities because they're throwing all the supposed science at people. And they're saying, basically, there's no hope beyond the grave. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, there's hope beyond the grave, but um, you know, we all came from a big bang and there was, no, there was no God, there was no creator. And so it's very sad um, when, you, when you see what's actually happening, especially to the young people, man. I just, my friends, if you're one of those people, keep searching and ask God, ask God to come into your life. Ask him to show himself to you. If he exists, invite him and challenge him to show himself to you and be willing to submit uh, and to follow him when he does. 
and I'd love to hear from you too. Send me a drop me an email, make a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video.